Are you looking to work on a data project end-to-end? -end? Well, you've come to the right place. I've got a problem uh, that I'm going to work through and solve, and I want you to join me as I work through the different components of that problem and how I'd go about solving it. So what am I actually talking about? So let's imagine for a moment, and this is all hypothetical uh, for legal reasons, uh, you've been asked to automate reviewing the customer feedback uh, for an online, in this case, camping store uh, to identify any issues with products um, to help basically make better buying decisions um, and provide feedback to manufacturers on how they can improve their product. So for example, we've got uh, some, well, first of all, I've got this AI generated picture of a dude who has way better hair than me. Uh, and he's kind of writing on a piece of paper about a broken tent. Um, and you can see here, there's a random product that I've selected and there's three bits of feedback there. Um, and they all actually say the same thing. Zipper broke after second use um, kind of disappointing uh, very spacious but zipper was broken and yep good temp blah blah zipper pops off so unless you went through and sort of read those or built some sort of machine learning algorithm around it um, you wouldn't actually know that this particular product had an inherent potentially an inherent problem with the zip so um, what I want to take us through is how we might plan automatically kind of reviewing the reviews and coming up with any themes or drivers that might be causing customer sort of pain, if you will. So how do we do that? So we start off with a bit of a problem statement, which we've got here, automate reviewing customer feedback for an online camping store to identify issues. Cool. What are some of the steps we need to take to achieve that? So we'll grab a little sticky note, we'll keep it. I've got this new theory called fast, bad, wrong, where we kind of just get in, get some stuff down and we'll kind of finesse it after that. So. We need to, uh, what we'll just call get data. We need to get some data. Uh, once we've got some data, uh, then we're probably going to need to um, sort of, what are we going to do? So we're going to get some data. And what data do we need? Well, I think we need, let's think about this logically, Adam. We need some product data. Uh, oops. And I'm going to assume that the product data it might be separate to the review data in the sense that we might have to collect the product data from either a product database or API or web scrape it. Um, but then the reviews might come from a different database, but have some sort of linkage or key. So what we might do is we might need some product data and we might need some product reviews. Okay. Then what do we want to do? So once we've got that, we then probably want to potentially um, get some data, get the product, get the review. With the reviews, we probably want to um, do some sort of categorization or classification. Um, and for this example, what we might do is we might see what we can get out of things like the OpenAI API and see if we can automate that whole process and get thousands of products, you know, potentially tens of thousands of reviews and have the automation that sits behind ChatGPT uh, to then go ahead and categorize all them for us. So to do that, we are going to then after we get the product reviews, we want to probably uh, pass them through the, what are we going to call this thing? I don't want to call it just the API. We'll call it, um, uh, we'll call it, pass them through the, we'll use the term AI, everyone else does. Um, so apart from getting data, we're probably going to have to, um, what are we going to do? Oh, don't make that bigger. No, it doesn't matter. Okay, we're going to get some data and we are going to, um, We'll just say program up uh, an AI of sorts, okay, or a large language model. Uh, so we'll get some data, we'll program up that. These two things happen, we pass them along uh, to there, and then we probably want some sort of output or conclusion. So we'll say outputs, okay. Um, thinking about, we haven't really gone through like who's the consumer of this report? Is it all of company? Is it one dude that does sort of quality reviews? Is it, you know, what does it look like for manufacturers? These are all gonna be different. Um, so maybe the initial output could be something as simple as a, let me think about this. Well, let's keep it easy. Let's keep it as just a, some sort of data set. Okay, it doesn't have to be too fancy. That's one of the outputs. Uh, and potentially another output might be some sort of dashboard. Okay, and this is me just thinking out loud and the dashboard. Well, I've got a few options. I'm a fan of Plotly Dash, I like that. I've also started playing around with a Streamlit. That's kind of fun too. Okay, so we'll pop that in there. And these are on the Python side of things. So we'll pop them over here. And then on the sort of Microsoft 
larger organizations love, it's obviously going to be Power BI. Okay, cool. So where are we? We need to get some data. We get some data, get some products, get some reviews, program up an AI, you know, tell ChatGPT what to do basically, pass the reviews to there. That sort of then, yeah, gets us to some sort of output. And then off we go. We got data sets. Happy days. So let's just get stuck into it. So here I am on the, you know, quote unquote clients uh, website. Now, obviously, this is just for demonstration purposes only. So um, we'd obviously ideally go back to the client and say, hey, can we get maybe a feed out of the database? Can we get SQL access? Is there an API we can access? That sort of thing. Um, and what I typically like to do, especially when I'm building out one of these end to end processes, rather than spend a whole heap of time trying to get every single product, because that's part of our process to get product data, um, I'll take a sample, right? I'll, I'll grab a sample of maybe 10, 20, 30 products, then grab a sample of maybe 10, 20, 30 reviews, uh, and then build it up from there, and then prove out that everything I want to do kind of works, and then go back and get the rest of the data. Especially if you're working with a client, it's unlikely they're going to say, you can't have all the data, like you've been brought in to be able to solve this problem. So let's start off by getting some product data. To do that, I'm going to not go into the thousands of potential listings, which I think is this one here. So we look at this, we've got how many got yeah, 4,000 under camping and hiking. What I might do is I might look under uh, one particular category to make it a little bit easier on ourselves. So let's pick a category. Let's click on this tent. Um, and then from that tent, oh, here we go, tents. Cool, awesome. So we're in the tents category. There's 393 products, but again, we don't need to grab all of them for our test. Uh, it looks like we've got an option here to view and you can view 30 or 90. Um, what I'm gonna do now is, and I've already got 90 selected, which is cool. What I'm gonna do now is rather than, uh, you know, use Python to sort of download the page and interpret the HTML, I'm actually just gonna have a look and see if there is any sort of backend API calls that we can replicate in Python, um, and that'll make it a bit easier for us to, to sort of get that data. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is, first of all, I'm gonna go to F12 on my browser. This will bring up the developer tools, or yeah, developer tools, as I say console, but the console is the JavaScript thing. Now, if you're not familiar with this, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I shouldn't say things like that. If you've never seen it before, it's probably confusing as, as anything. So um, what we have here is across the top, we've got a few different tabs. The one we're interested in is network. Um, and from there, you can see there's a couple of things happening. So there's a bit of a timeline, which is this one here with the little bars, and then there's a whole bunch of network calls. And so the way websites typically work these days is they'll load and then they'll load a whole bunch of stuff in the background. And that's the website using JavaScript to make a API call to some sort of endpoint. So what that means is I can scroll all the way down and I can click page two, and then boom, you see down here is a whole bunch of API calls that are occurring, okay? Uh, and what we wanna do is we wanna pick the right one that's gonna give us tents. Now, I'm just I'm looking through this with my eyes, and I'm seeing, okay, there's a few weird ones. This one's got the word tent in there. And if I click, when I click on that, I get these options here, headers, payload, preview, response. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for, okay, yep, tents, JSON, true, page two, page size, 90, this feels perfect. Let's have a look at the preview of that. Okay, so it's got a payload, which is great. It's got some search results, which is awesome. Scrolling down, looking down, looking down, whole bunch of interesting stuff. One that I'm interested in most is this results. And there we have it. Here is every single product, which is awesome. And each one of these is just like an element or an item in this results array or list as they're called in Python. And so I can click on one of these and now I've got all this really rich information, which is all about this product which will give us everything we need to then go off and figure out how do we get those reviews. So let's start by getting the product information because when I'm looking at this, I can see that we've got some information about rating, but when I look into a particular product, I can get a whole heap of information about their reviews. So why don't we go ahead and let's figure this out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to here on the left-hand side, I'm gonna right click, and I've got this option to copy. Alrighty, and when I look at that, there's an option there that says copy as curl, and that's the one we want to select. So copy as curl, and what that's going to do is that's going to go ahead and create a curl command and copy that into our clipboard. And what we can do is we can paste that into a handy dandy website called curlconverter.com. So if I paste that in there, um, what that's taking is this input of a curl command, and it's actually generating a Python requests um, 
bunch of syntax. Now there's a whole heap of information in here we don't need, so don't stress too much. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to modify it slightly, edit it a little bit, uh, make sure it's doing exactly what we need it to do, and then use this as a means to get a sample of tense. Um, in this case, we'll just grab 90, and we'll probably grab it from the first page. Um, and then with that information, we'll go ahead and figure out how to get the reviews. So let's give that a copy. Now I've got some Python, but where do I run it? Now, if you've been a fan of the channel for a little while, you've probably got Python installed and you've probably seen one of my earlier videos showing you how to set up your Jupyter Notebook. But if you're brand new to this, that's okay. What you can actually do is you can go to colab.google and as long as you've got a Google account, you can create a notebook. And that's, that's it. You don't have to install anything. You're ready to run Python, which is a really quick and easy way to get set up and started and take away any of that friction that will slow people down and saying, oh, I've got to install something, got to figure out all this other stuff. You are good to go. This is a Colab notebook, very similar to a Jupyter notebook. If you've never seen either, that's okay. I'll talk you through it. Um, but all that means is you can put some Python code in here, hit the run button, and then here's your data. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to go and paste that in. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this variable called cookies. Uh, it's a dictionary of key value pairs. I don't want that in here. I'm going to see if I can run this without it. I'm also going to remove cookies from here as well. Uh, and by doing so, I need to remove cookies from here. Uh, and let's get rid of that. And now I'm going to talk you through exactly what this is doing. So we've got our import requests. Now, if you're brand new to Python, request is a really popular way to um, request information from the internet using Python. Uh, it's a very friendly and easy, easier to use uh, mechanism uh, versus some of the built-in sort of packages. Um, then we've got our headers. These are typically required from most websites. Um, information in here helps the website make decisions. Uh, next up, we've got our parameters. So this is uh, JSON true, which is good to see. Page two, we might set that to page one, just so we're getting the first page. Um, page size is 90. Now, I could try my luck and try to get all 400 products, but again, going back to our, our bit of a plan, we're not in a rush to get everything right now. We just want a sample, and then we're gonna work from there and go back and get more data. The last thing you want to do is be spending, you know, 90% of your time just trying to get the data. And then you realize, okay, there's something wrong further up in your or down in your process. So you want to kind of just test out everything, a bit of a discovery, make sure everything kind of works, sticks together, and then we'll figure out how to get the rest of the data. So we've got our parameters and then this is the the good stuff here. We've got a variable called response and that's going to go ahead and say request, which is our um, package here. We're going to use the get method, which is built into requests. And then we're going to request some tents using those parameters uh, and those headers. So if I hit shift enter on that, okay. And I might have shift enter a couple more times just to give us, oops. Oh, I can't do that. In Jupyter Notebook, you can hit shift enter a bunch of times and it will give you more cells. In Google Colab, it looks like I have to hit this button at the top called plus code and it gives me a few more cells. Okay, that's now finished running and we've got a response. So what I'm looking for from this response is a 200, which tells me that we successfully um, were able to, it, it's an okay, didn't fail. 200 is good, 404 would be bad, 403, 500 is all bad. So 200 is good, we like a 200. Now I'm gonna try my luck and say .json. Now if I run this, oops, I've got too many parentheses. Now if I run this, what's gonna happen is it's gonna to try to display all of that data on screen and potentially slow down my browser. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to wrap this up in a function called type. Okay. Wrap it up in a function called type, shift enter on that. That's going to tell me what type of Python object am I working with? And that then will tell me which kind of methods do I want to run or can I run on this object? So let me talk you through that. So we've got a dictionary. Fantastic. I know that a dictionary has a method called keys. So I can go dot keys, and shift enter on that. And straight away, this will bring back dictionary keys, search results, response code, and response message. Now, to clean this up a little bit more, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna assign this JSON response to a variable called JSON response. Now this just makes our code a tiny bit cleaner and allows us to take that JSON response. Okay, we'll paste, oops, we'll paste that in here. And from that JSON response, uh, let me double check those keys because it's been three seconds and I've already forgotten. Okay, search results. So we'll take those search results and we'll pass that in asking for everything inside that key. But again, I'm a bit nervous that I'm going to end up outputting everything to screen, which might slow my browser down a little bit. So I can say, what is the type 
of the objects of the object that is assigned to search results as, as a key. So again, dictionary, perfect. So we can do a similar sort of exercise, which is add a dot keys at the end. And that'll give me a list of keys that are available to us. Okay, so search status, search request, results. You know what? I think it's gonna be results, so let's just try that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do results. I'm gonna go ahead and guess results. I would like to think it's a list, a list of dictionaries, but let's just test it anyway. So once again, I like to chuck a type on there, shift enter on that, and it is a list, fantastic. So what that means is I now have a list. One of the tests I would like to do is a length test because I'm expecting this to be 90. 90 is what I requested. So shift enter on that. And we've got 90, which is fantastic. So now that I've got 90 items in my list, what I can do is I can have a look at one of those, get an understanding of what I'm working with, um, maybe convert that into a table, output it as a sort of pandas data frame, have a bit of a play around with it. And then we need to move over to our next task is once I've got the product details, how do I get the reviews? Okay, so coming back to our plan, get the product details, get the reviews. So to do that, let's go ahead and have a quick look at one of our items in the list. So let's have a look at the first one, item zero, shift enter on that. Okay, beautiful. So we've got a, uh, not too nested actually, I was going to say it's quite nested because we've got SKUs and okay, so it looks like there is, I guess, options uh, available within the products. This one's got one option, this one's got a color green. Um, I'm going to scroll down. So looking at this, it's all looking pretty good. Um, we've got the regular price, we've got the percentage off, okay, a whole bunch of stuff. But for us, we're really just interested in getting a hold of all of those reviews. So when I look at um, any review related things in here at the moment, I thought I saw rating, where was that? Okay, here we go. So we've got rating. So this has got a 4.1296, it's a funny rating. Uh, it's got 54 reviews. And I think what's interesting is whilst it's a fairly highly rated product. There might still be pockets of people that have had a poor experience. Um, and it might be a, a growing trend or something new that's happening. Or, you know, even if 90% of people are fairly happy, what what didn't the 10% like? You know, let's, let's try to improve everything. So um, let's go ahead and see if there's any actual reviews in here, which there is not. Um, and I'm, I'm sort of anticipating that the reviews may not even come from the same website. There's a lot of third-party review aggregators that will take reviews from you, your website, and a bunch of other websites and kind of put them together. Um, that's what I'm anticipating. So why don't we, to make our lives a lot easier, why don't we go ahead, I've picked item zero here. Why don't we go ahead and actually go to page one, which I can actually modify at the top and shift, oh, not shift enter, just enter on that. Uh, and we'll give ourselves a bit more space to see what's happening. Now, I'm fairly certain... No, is this... I'm not sure. How, okay, this is what's freaking me out because I'm pretty sure I didn't read anything to do with orange and I didn't know there was two options. So I shouldn't assume that item zero is item zero on this page. Let me double check that. So how can we double check that? Well, what do we got? Vendor color, desert sun. Okay, yellow. Yep, okay. Oh, Okay, silly me. Available colors. There is two here. My bad. So there's a, let's have a look at this. So there's available colors, which is a list. And that list is made up of two different unique SKUs. Um, and one is yellow and the other one is green, which is this product here. Perfect. So what I want to do is I want to click into this product and I want to keep an eye on my network tab to see if there's any API calls to any sort of review related things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the clear button, this one on the left, and I'm gonna click on this particular tent. Now there's a whole bunch of stuff loading, which is awesome. And I can see as I scroll down, let's bring that down. What do we got? Oh, here we go. So we've got 54 reviews. If I click on that, it brings me down. Very highly rated, fantastic. So bring that up a little bit. Now there's a search filter here. I'm just gonna make my life a bit easier and search for the word review. Okay, perfect. And there's two results, okay? So we've got to figure out which one it might be. We've got this one here, which, let's have a look at the actual header. API, data, products, JSON, resource, whole bunch of stuff going on. And the second one is, again, a whole bunch of stuff going on. So what we're really chasing is which one do we want to use, like which one will make the most sense. Hit the preview button, got some results. We've got result zero, which is the first result. And really is just a whole heap of statistics and data, which is awesome. 
and could be very useful to us. Let's have a look. Rating distribution. Okay, this is all really good stuff. So what's the difference between this one and this one? So this one's got, again, results. Uh, I think I see what's going on. Okay, cool. So I think the first one is some aggregate stats, which brings us a whole heap of really rich information about the product and some of the reviews. So this might be the actual product payload. And in this one, this one I believe gives us individual people's reviews. Don't forget to buy the tent stakes. So that's one of the top reviews. Let's see if I can find that. Let's have a look. Okay. Oh yeah. Standard two person tent. Very easy to set up and break down. Standard two person tent. Very easy to set up and break down. Amazing. So what I'm going to do again, right click, copy as curl. Okay. I'm going to put that into my curl converter. Okay. So let's paste that one in there. Alrighty. This is a this is a super long, all right, let's get into Python and I'll talk you through my thinking because that's, that's a bit weird. All right, so let's give ourselves a bit more space. Let's add some more code blocks and we'll put a Python comment in there. I was going to write the word comment. Uh, review, oops, review, let's do this, review testing. Okay, awesome. So, yeah, first thing I'm noticing is if I scroll up to my tense query, you'll notice that the the get request, it, it doesn't have a question mark because everything after the question mark is a URL parameter and Python requests allows you to have those as sort of these key value pairs in this you know, dictionary, which is awesome, right? Uh, for whatever reason, curl converter hasn't been successful in creating a parameter sort of variable and therefore we've got all these different parameters here. Now I could sit here and go through each of them or I could very easily pop that into uh, ChatGPT and we'll just ask it to create us a parameter uh, thing. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so what I could say is something like, can you convert these URL params into a Python <laughs> requests uh, param dictionary and we'll pass over the params and we'll hit enter on that and it's not because we don't know how to do it it's just because this would do it a lot quicker okay uh, it's talking a bit about um, the URL decoding but ultimately if you look here it's now got this really well formatted um, set of parameters right and you'll notice a couple of things between this and the other API calls they all kind of share the same sort of um, approach where you have your offset and your limit so you say okay let's start at item zero in my big long list of items and let's go up to a limit of 12 and then you can set your offset to say 12 and then go for another 12 and you kind of move along um, the list that way so again we might have an option here to potentially just dial up that limit a little bit. We don't want to get too bogged down in the detail. I'm happy to leave it at 12 for testing, but it could be a consideration for when we go into maybe quote production um, to get tens of thousands of reviews. So let's go ahead and grab these params. I'm just interested in that part. And what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the parameters from the URL, which is this one here. So let's get rid of all of them. We don't need them anymore because we've got them as a separate variable. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we actually are going to just paste them in here. So let's talk through this request. So we've got, again, import requests. We've got our headers and then we've got our parameters. So we're looking at reviews, reviews and stats, product ID. Okay, this is really important. So product ID is equal to 216300. Now, we need to make sure that we, in our product data, have a 216300. Otherwise, how are we going? Oh, there it is. It's called style ID. That's pretty cool. Is it elsewhere? It's probably elsewhere. 216300. 216300. Okay, it's part of the SKU as well. Oh yeah, product ID. Let's use that one. That one makes the most sense. That's the product ID. Perfect. I'm very happy right now. So, next challenge is will this query run? Okay, it's quick. We'll check a few things. Ratings only, false. Okay, everything else is looking good. Let's go ahead and shift enter on that. And let's check our response, okay? Perfect. And if I go to .json, let's just see if it will, again, just pull down all the, hmm, pass key is invalid. Uh, oh, 
okay, I see what I did wrong here. I've got a request. I've got some headers. I haven't included the params that we created. So let's go params equal params. Shift enter, shift enter. And just like magic, we now have all 12 of those reviews, uh, which is pretty cool. There they, all, there they all are. Okay, so let's go back to our bit of a plan on the page and try to understand what we're trying to do. So product data, have we been able to get a sample of that? Yes, we'll give that a quick cleanup and we'll get that into a place where it's completely usable. Product reviews, have we been able to get those? I believe so, this looks like them. Yes, standard two person tent, looking good. What else we got? Yep, perfect. Awesome. Okay, what's next on our list? Program up an AI and then pass them through to the AI. Okay, before we do that, let's clean up this data ready for passing through. So let's give ourselves a little little task in between, uh, which is pretty random. We know we've got to do it, but let's just... And we, this data is pretty clean, but let's just, you know, just get it in a format that is completely usable to us. So let's go clean up data and to be honest we don't really need a lot for testing right so all we really need is a list of product IDs and then when we talk about programming up an AI so it can then sort of categorize data what does it need it probably wants maybe we'll give it the product ID so it can give us that back in a, some sort of JSON format we'll give it the title because that might be useful in how it in interprets things we'll give it um, we'll, we'll give it the actual review itself um, and it may be maybe a little bit of detail around the actual product. Yeah, maybe the product description or title. So that, that makes sense. So we'll have the product ID and we'll have the product uh, sort of title. So it, it, you know, it knows, a, you know, the large language model can use that as context. Uh, and then the title of the review and the review. And so I'm now thinking we need four columns um, to make things easy and then, you know, a bit easier for us to interpret. Let's just grab are those four four elements so to do that what we need to do is first of all let's go back to uh, let's just grab one of these things so where are we so we'll grab this one here let's think out loud for a second which is a bit dangerous you know what let's let's move out of the dictionary world and into the pandas data frame because that might be a bit easier to work with um, but we're only really interested in well Actually, take that back. Let's stay with dictionaries for now because I think once we trim back the keys that we need, I think it would be a lot easier. So um, what we're going to do is we've kind of got a single product here. So we'll call this one product, okay? And the product, that's just a variable, we'll say is just one item. But we're really interested in, in a couple of keys. One... Of the, well, let's have a look. So we're interested in the product ID. So we'll make a note of that. And we are interested in, where are we? What are we talking about? Oh yeah, we're interested in the title, trail made to tent footprint. I'm wondering if we need to include the word tent only by part of the category, just in case it's not included in the title. But we could figure that out just by looking at some of the titles. Trail and tent, well then tent, tent, yeah, it kind of says tent every time. Again, we're just testing, so we'll, we'll make a note of that mentally um, come back to it. So product ID is good and clean title. I love it. It's called a clean title. That's really, really nice. So we've got a product and we're only really interested in those two keys. What we might do, and this is getting a bit funky, but we might do a, a list comprehension and this is, I'm not going to say it's advanced or not advanced. Or it's just, if you've never done it before, it does come across as a bit confusing. So let's start with the list comprehension part. So if I was to put uh, brackets around this and say X for X in product, all this is doing is literally just giving us X represents this. In fact, I'm getting this a bit wrong. So this is product. So why don't we go back a step? And why don't we call this product? So we'll go back two steps. So we've got our JSON payload. That's everything. This is all the results. So this products here is the 90 items. And then product is each one of those items. So product for product in products. And again, if this is a bit confusing. Stay with me. It's going to get a lot easier. So now that we've got this, if I was to again ask for item zero, 
nothing really changes. This is a list comprehension and it allows us to do some funky for loops and stuff within a list and it generates a list. So what do we actually want out of this? So we kind of just want, say for example, product ID, right? So I can ask for product ID, shift enter on that. And now all we're gonna get back is this product ID, uh, which is great, love that, awesome. But what we really kind of want is the product ID and the clean title. So a couple of options. Um, we can put them in their own little list, so there's two items, or we can create a simple dictionary. So what I might do is I might create a really basic dictionary that basically says something like, and we'll stick with the same key name, so we'll say product ID. Oh, don't know how I did that, let's try that again. Product ID, that's one of them, and the second one is clean title. So we've got product ID, okay, and then we've got clean title, and clean title, Okay, is product, it's a square, oh, did it again. I think it must be this keyboard. All right, let's copy that. And we've got product, and we've got clean title. All righty, uh, and we'll get rid of those, and we'll put our ending curly brace on that. And then what we're doing here is we're kind of creating our own little dictionary, which is ultimately filtering out all the other keys um, for product in product. So now if I shift enter on that, we now have, this really nice, simple product ID and a clean title, which is great. Um, and I take it all back. I am going to create a data frame because I think that'll just be easier on our eyes because this is fun, but it's a bit, yeah, it kind of works. I keep going back and forth, but let's just create a data frame. Again, why do I, I'm trying to think, why do I want a data frame? I think I want a data frame because when I merge it with the reviews, it'll just be a bit a bit easier to work with at that point, potentially. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, cool. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the top. I'm gonna to take my import requests because I like to have my requests in my notebook on a separate line. And I'm gonna go import requests. And then I'm gonna say import pandas as PD, which is convention. So anytime you're looking at documentation, you'll see PD. I'm gonna hit the play button on that or shift enter. And now that I've got access to pandas, I'm going to do something super easy. And I'm going to say PD dot data frame. Okay. And I can just wrap up this list of dictionaries here, shift enter on that. And now we have a really cool little table. I don't really use Colab that much. What does this button do? Oh, oh that's kind of cool. It's kind of funky. Um, but yes, we now have this data frame, which is a cool little table. So we might want to assign that to something like products underscore data frame. Okay, shift enter on that. And now we have uh, basically a table, think of it as Excel, you know, two columns, really simple. And that gives us access to these two here. Now we've only down below, we've only pulled out the reviews for the first one. But as you can already probably tell, it wouldn't be too much effort to sort of loop through each of these product IDs and collect up all those reviews. But for now, uh, we are just gonna do some testing to make sure that we can and go back to our plan, get some data, product tick, reviews tick, clean up the data, doing, and then we're gonna program up an API and we're gonna pass that through and do all sorts of really cool and funky stuff. So let's keep going. All right, so uh, got our products there, which is great. Now we've got our sort of uh, request here. Now something I should note, the product ID is kind of embedded down here. It would be a wise move to wrap this up in a function and that way we can just call that function by passing in a product ID and it would spit out all the reviews. But first let's go through the exercise of cleaning up. We don't want to optimize too early. We want to make sure that every step of our process is achievable and then we can finesse and you know refactor and do all the fun stuff after that. So what do we got? Uh, we've got some reviews. Uh, we're going to do the same exercise as we did last time. So we're going to understand what keys are we working with. And again, we only really want sort of the title, uh, the review text, ah, the rating. I think that's going to be important as well. I'm sure there's other stuff in here. And I think what we'll do is we'll make a note to come back to that because that might be useful when we want to um, iterate on the AI categorization part. We might want to pass in more useful information, but for now, I just want to see the whole process is achievable end to end. So let's figure out these keys. What are we working with? So we've got limit, offset, total results, locale, boom, results looks familiar. So let's work with results. Uh, and last time I signed this to a variable, but for now we'll leave it as is. Results, all right. And looking at this, I believe, Oh my God, <laughs> come on. All right, 
it's a list of dictionaries, very similar to the last lot. So we've got an ID, which is good. We've got the product ID, awesome. Uh, oh, original product name. Huh. Oh, I see. Okay, so we've got clean product name and then the original product name. Do they include the clean name here? That'd be useful. Maybe not. Maybe it's clean on the website. Anyway, getting distracted. So what do we need from this? We need the basically the review text and then the rating as well. So let's find those two things. So I think what we might do is for now is we might just filter on the very first review, which is awesome. Ah, here we go. So we've got rating. So we'll quickly make a note of that. So we've got rating and do I want the review? Hmm. I always think about this. So here we have an ID that represents, a unique identifier that represents the review. Now I could pass that to a, a chat GPT API and have it return it. But if I'm kind of calling the API, I already have that ID. So I don't think I necessarily need it right now. Well, you know, I'm always nervous. I don't grab some data and then I kind of need it. So let's go ahead and just, we'll pull that in as well. And that might be useful. So we'll call that one, oops. What's that one called? This is called ID. So we'll just make a note of that. ID. So we've got the rating, the ID, and I'm going to need two more things. One was the title. Uh, title. That's super helpful. Thank you. So we'll grab that. And the next one is, where are we? Du -du -du. Oh yeah, review text. Okay, cool. Almost everything we need is here. The only difference is because this even has the product ID. So let's just... Hmm, now I'm thinking, do I use, well, I have a suspicion that the non-clean product name is everything, but doesn't have that. You know what? To make our lives even easier for just the API pass over part, I think the rating, the title, the review, text, and the original product names, all we kind of need. I don't think for this part of the process, and we'll come back and probably do it. I don't think we need to. Um, combine it with this data and you know I, th I think having a bit more information so try yeah you know, trail made two tent with footprint how different is that to this one here trail made two tent with footprint yeah it's got a bit of extra information I don't think ChatGPT is going to care about that okay where are we at so last time to get us this cool little table where is it? We were able to do this bit of funky code here. We're going to do it again. Uh, this time I'll do it a bit slower, make sure I'm not um, bamboozling everyone. And we'll go ahead and we're going to use a list comprehension and we're going to create a dictionary based on some of the keys. So to do that, again, what we're going to do is we're going to make it really simple on ourselves and we are going to, okay, call this one uh, reviews, okay, which is that one there. And all I've done there is I've really just assigned a variable name to the data we're already looking at. So if I go ahead and look at reviews again, we've just got a list of reviews. It's just a list of dictionaries. Each dictionary represents a review. So what I can do is I can actually say review, oops, can spell things right. Review for review in reviews. Again, shift enter on that. This is just a list comprehension. Nothing actually changes here. So if I go scroll back up, Oh my God, there's a lot of data, which I'm very excited about. We love data. Oh God, let me grab that. Where it is. Okay. Review for review and reviews. Beautiful. So what I can now do is I can now create a dictionary. So to do that, I have my two curly braces. I have what I want to call the key, which can be anything. So that could be something as simple as review ID. Okay. And then the key for that is the key from the actual um, dictionary here, which is review. And that one is called ID. So what I like to do is just very quickly test that that's all working fine. Shift enter on that. And what I should get back is, ah, an error because I did something wrong. What did I do wrong? Uh, it says there's no key called ID. Is it capitalized? Am I getting it? Let's have a look. I was actually going to say it's been a while. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, of course. It's capital I, Adam. Well done. So it is case sensitive. So let's go ahead and put an I capital in there. And now we've got our 12 reviews, which is awesome. So what we can now do, add a comma to that. And this is very similar to last time. We've got our next uh, sort of key we want to add in. We've got rating. Let's do rating. So 
For us, we'll call it rating, but we need to get the capitalization right when referring to the keys in this dictionary. So we'll put that as rating. Okay, shift enter on that. I'm just kind of building it up as I go. So fours and fives. This one's actually pretty well reviewed. Couple of ones, which I'm interested in, and we have to make a decision at some point on what we're going to pass to our AI. Okay. So where are we? we got the review. We got the rating. Okay. Uh, next up, we need a title. So to get the title. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go, we'll say, we'll call it title, and then we're going to go ahead and say review, open and close square brackets, because we're asking for a key, and we're going to shift enter to keep testing. I test like this because if I was to do all of them and something broke, I wouldn't be quite sure exactly which one it was, whereas if I build it up slowly, it makes it a bit easier to identify issues. Uh, review text and original product name. So... Let's go ahead and finish that up. And I might just fast forward this last little bit for you so you're not sitting there through all of it. And there we have it. So we now have the review ID, which is unique identifier of each review. We have a rating, uh, we have the title, and we have the review text. Now I feel like uh, we could go and iterate through each of these, um, pass this payload into um, chat GPT with some instructions and then have chat GPT return to us things like uh, any sort of categorizations of that text you know any any sort of themes that it's detecting that sort of stuff and then we can finesse it from there so for example when we looked at the one that was talking about um, you know all three reviews for this particular product had a broken zipper I think it would be ideal that chat GPT would come back and, and sort of tell us about that that zipper. Now, this video has gone on a, a bit long, um, and so I want to recap and just sort of talk about where we're at. So first of all, make sure you subscribe to the channel uh, because there's going to be a follow up video in the coming days. So don't miss out on that um, because this isn't just you know one quick project. I think we're going to build on this and reiterate and have you know feedback from the comments, feedback from you input, um, how we can make this better. But ultimately, where, where do we get to? So we've got some data, which is fantastic. We've got some product data. We've got some review data. Um, we're now at the point, we've got that sort of clean and ready to go. And we're now at the point that we're ready to pass that over uh, into OpenAI to then categorize that, come up with any sort of themes or any sort of quality issues. And then we can start to do some analysis um, and outputs of that as well. In fact, I might even add in uh, into here, uh, we'll call this maybe something like the initial analysis or, you know, prelim analysis or just analysis, uh, because we don't always want to jump straight into, you know, pretty outputs, uh, when we haven't done some, some data analysis. Okay. Awesome. So just to quickly go back through our data, we've been able to import requests and pandas. Uh, we've got our request here for our actual products. We've got 90. Um, when we, when we sort of refactor our code, we might see if we can get that up to 100 or 200 or 300, which would be great, speed things up. From that, we've been able to grab out our product and clean title, but there's a whole heap of other information that might be useful as well. Uh, next up, we've been able to go in and grab some reviews, which is really cool. Uh, with that, we've been able to have a look at all the reviews and get it down to just the important parts, which is the review ID, the rating, the title, the review text, and the product name as well. And in the next, video, we are going to go through and build upon this using the open AI um, playground and then build a whole Python sort of AI interpreter. So the way that looks is very quickly. If I go to open AI um, and I log into open AI, where are we? In there, I'm going to go into API and we are going to be going through the playground, which is really cool because there's assistance and there's chat and we can play with both. Um, we'll probably start off with chat and build upon that. So again, don't miss out on this really cool videos we're going to be working through. It is a community effort. So I want you to drop a comment on your thoughts, uh, what's working well, what isn't, what you would like us to sort of do with this project and build upon it. Um, it doesn't just need to be for a camping store. I'm sure there is millions of businesses out there that is collecting some really interesting information from their customers. Um, and through this automation process, we can then start to help them review that um, and get some real value out of that. So again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure you are subscribed, give it a like, uh, notifications turned on, all that good stuff. Um, and I'll catch you in the next video.